You're watching Johnny Hockey. So you might think I'm going to talk here about how the Leafs let in two shorthanded goals on the same power play, or the fact that they got shellacked 4-1 by the lowly Vancouver Canucks this season, but no, I'm going to take it in a different direction, and look, I honestly want the Leafs to win around this year. I, I really do. I've been around here watching these playoff series every year, and I pull for them, because yes, I know that a ton of people like to hate on the Leafs, but I feel bad for the fan base, and I feel for all the people who've been involved in first round loss after loss after loss, or when I was growing up in the early 2010s, late 2000s, dude, the Leafs were awful. They weren't even making the playoffs. I remember when they made it in 2013 and they lost in that famous 4-1 Game 7 against the Bruins. That was, to me, an anomaly. It was weird. I felt like I was in a different dimension watching the Leafs even making it to the playoffs. So now, it's refreshing, honestly, to see a Leafs team that has a real shot to go all the way and seems to have almost all the pieces in place to do that after the trade deadline where Kyle Dubas was just cooking dish after dish after dish. But in yesterday's game, Ryan O'Reilly takes a shot off the hand, and you can see he's clearly in a lot of discomfort, leaves the game, does not return. Now, immediately, my head went to Brendan Gallagher about six, seven years back, where he took a few really bad shots off of the hand, broke his hand, and that was quite a recovery process for Gallagher, where it was not easy, and he was out for a while taking that shot off the hand, and he came back with extra protection on his gloves because of that, but that was not fun for number 11 for the Montreal Canadiens, and it looked somewhat similar for Ryan O'Reilly. I know the Gallagher one was closer proximity, so it probably hurt more, but still, taking a puck from an NHLer off the hand could easily fracture it, and then you're dealing with a really bad situation, and that's not even why I'm thinking this might be worse than you think, right? Because I think Quite a few Leaf fans, especially Leaf fans who've seen this type of thing before, are almost expecting a fracture in the hand of Ryan O'Reilly and for him to be out for a few weeks, or, I mean, praying that it's less than that and it's not a fracture, uh, or maybe just a bad bruise or something. But the Austin Matthews one is what I want to take a look at. Now, I know he takes the shot off the knee, he goes out of the game and comes back, so people are saying... Oh, thank goodness. Austin's back, so he must be okay. But after the game in his post-game interview, Austin was talking about how he was in a lot of pain, how he had to come back and grind it out. He was being very vague, as hockey players do. But if you've been watching hockey long enough, you can read between the lines of what guys are saying. He also mentioned that he needed to do a few things for the injury to calm down as he said before he could come back into the game and again he mentions that he was in a lot of pain and that he had to grind it out and Austin Matthews already has a decently sized injury history and it's not uncommon for a guy to play through an injury that they probably shouldn't play through and I'm not saying Austin's any different but I'm saying that this might be worse than you think okay because Yes, Austin came back, which means he was good enough to play, but the way he was talking about it after the game, go watch that post-game interview from him if you haven't already, it did not seem good. It really seemed like he was fighting through it just to stay in the game, and a one bad hit, one bad blocked shot, and this could really, really go south for number 34 of the Leafs, and even if it doesn't, let's say he does try to play through this here, it's another log in the fire of, oh, Austin's not at 100%, he is struggling, he's got some kind of injury, and again, if he tweaks it in the playoffs, dude, it's not croquet in the playoffs. Like, there's going to be some hard hits, some block shots. Like, if he does have a problem with his knee here, it's going to get amplified in the playoffs. So, it's just, it, it might really not be good here for Austin Matthews, even though he came back into the game, right? Especially the way he was talking about it. I just, it worried me a little bit for his health. And so, you've got the Ryan O'Reilly thing, which we're hoping it might not be a broken hand, but it definitely looked like it, and you've also got the Austin Matthews thing where it really didn't look good. He did say it was a stinger, but it seemed like it went more than that, just the way he was talking about it so vaguely, and this is not the first time Austin's had uh, an injury that he's had to sit through, so 
hopefully it doesn't get any worse for him and for two of these guys like if O'Reilly and Matthews are both injured and not in the playoffs for the Leafs I don't really need to tell you how catastrophic that is for the Toronto Maple Leafs roster you know so especially going up against like a Tampa Bay so it's not good for the Leafs it really is not let me know what you think about this the comments down below as usual hopefully it's not as serious as it might have looked here and uh, they can come back to play real soon and as close to 100% as you can be before starting a really tough playoff series against the Tampa Bay Lightning there. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. You, thanks for watching Johnny Arcade.